Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And um, first time visiting my channel, the usual subscribe, like, share. Um, I'm not even sure how I come across the topics I tend to talk about. I guess, you know, sometimes I might see a video, sometimes I might see a piece of news, and sometimes I think to myself, how the hell did I get onto this topic? I'm looking at something totally unrelated, but a word will jump out at me like yesterday, it was satellite families. I'm thinking to myself, what are satellite families? Then so I go and check out what satellite families are and I find out that they are families that have worldwide um, net worth. They are very, very rich. They put their, they buy properties in the countries via this investment program, the Millionaires Investment Program, and then they don't live in these houses, um, but they might spend about five million or eight million on these properties. They don't really want them. It's just a way to dump them the, the cash in a different country. And then they go off back to their country. They might come back and send their kids to school. And that's what they do. So after finding out what satellite families were, I started thinking, OK, this is all to do with the EB5 as in America and the tier one as in the UK, the investor, um, the immigrant investor programs. And then I start thinking, well, you know, I know I've done a video like this before, but then I think to myself, well, if you're trying to stop immigration once again, blaming it on all the immigrants once again, why are you inviting them to pay for a visa for them and their families to come into the country. That means you can be bought. Your country can be sold. And that's what you're doing, selling your country. And I think the people who do this, because technically the, the investor program is supposed to mean that these people invest 1 million or 2 million or whatever the criteria is, depending on the country. And that is supposed to go towards um, 10 jobs for 10 citizens and they're supposed some of them require that you invest in real estate some want you to invest in stocks and bonds but regardless it's supposed to improve the economy but if these people who are coming into the country and because they have a target, I think last year it was about 10,000 they wanted, and they're getting less than 100 people coming in, they're bound to bend the rules. And they don't go through so much bureaucracy. And there's not all those checks. They're looking for the money so anybody can be let in, providing they've got that money. They don't really check whether or not they're victims of tax fraud. They don't check whether or not where the money is really coming from. I think 75% don't have interviews to get into the country. So what does that mean? It does mean that show me the money and I'll let you in. A few people, okay, if they think they might be dangerous, and depending on the country, they might make a few more checks. But I understand that 85% of the investor, the millionaire investors, are Chinese. And you know, if they're investing in the country, they're investing for a reason. They are not walking out empty handed. Some countries, they just want to invest in the country, or they just want somewhere to move their money to. That's what they want to do. But the majority, you have to think, why are they investing in a country, especially like the UK, which the economy isn't great, it's not as beautiful as it once was, there's a lot of unemployment, mass unemployment, there's no, hardly any jobs. I mean, I guess the automation might look attractive to some investors. I don't know. But it's not, uh, the, not what I would think, a place that I would want to go and live. And that is why they don't live here. They pay the money 
They do what they need to do for the five years. So, and I don't think they have any restrictions on how long they have to stay in the country. But like with foreign nationals, if they go out of the country for more than two years, they actually they can lose their residency and they cannot apply for citizenship. They have to start all over again. But people on investor visas, they don't have those same restrictions. I know in um, America, no, it wasn't America. I think it was Canada. Um, this woman went into, oh, this bloody thing. Let me just show the slow this down so I can't hear this pinging every five minutes. Yeah, but um, went into Canada. Um, she bought a property for five million. She got into Quebec, I think, um, on the say on the Monday, and within two weeks, she went back to China. She didn't go back for eight years. The tax people, then you know, not reporting tax, so they're not making money, no tax revenue off of this. I think she ended up paying 65 um, euros, and her property is worth 8 million after the eight years. So you kind of think, who is benefiting where is that money going? I mean, a lot of them, I think they were doing some research. I've got it on a video. I'm going to put the link at the bottom. But a lot of them were not even giving jobs to people. They're saying that they would, but the way that they do all the figures, people weren't getting jobs. So where's all this money going? I have no idea. Is it going to help protect the people, the rich as usual, helping them with their getaway plan? Because we know that when the shit hits the fan, they're not going to be amongst us. They're going to be in their little haven. And I was watching one of these um, golden visa applications where um, this guy, he actually went undercover. And he was told to go to this agency because a lot of them, they use agencies to um, process the application. And went to the agency, told the agency, look, I haven't been paying my taxes. You know, I, I've put down that I'm running a um, pawn shop, but, you know, I'm really doing something else. And all of the stuff, told them the truth, you know. But the woman was saying, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. You better not disclose that on the paper then. You better not. And if you've got any too many problems, we can change your identity. Don't worry about that. Um, we have a place that we know in St. Kitts and Nevis. They deal with um, they deal with identities, different identities. And uh, you can park your money in... Um, the British, what was it? The British Isles, or not the British Isles, what was it called? Um, the British, British Virgin Islands. You can park your money in there. That's supposed to be a tax haven. Got through the whole process on false information. So how do we know who they're letting in just because they've got the money? We don't know, do we? Well, to be honest... We, we don't really need to know because we don't benefit from it anyway. None of us benefit from us. It's only people at the top, the people who get the money, the people who are target, you know, trying to attract these millionaire investors. I don't know what they can offer them. But whatever it is, it's something that we don't know about because we're made to feel as though the country is falling apart. Maybe it's not. Maybe they want us to believe that it's falling apart. Maybe all of this um, stuff about, you know, making people homeless through DWP and whatever it is, maybe it's just a front. We don't know. How do we know what's really going on? We only see what the papers show us and what the media tells us. So if, okay, if, um, if they even got 100 investors, I know their target was 10,000, that was America's target, um, that's still 100 million pounds. Well, we all know that 60 million, they blew it on those anklets. And they blow, blow a lot with DWP. So I don't even know. They get the money. They just blow it. I guess easy come, easy go. But um, it's not a comfortable feeling. 
It's not a comfortable feeling. And the reason why I talk about this is because the governments and the politicians love to blame immigrants and love to throw immigrants out there. And that is their um, bargaining point. That is how they get votes. They know we still have a predominantly racist society. We've always got people who are not racist. Not everybody's racist, but they play on the ones who are. And they play on the ones who are by giving them false information. And that's where I have an issue. Because the people who are racist and biased, they don't want to know. They don't want to learn. They don't want, they're not interested in the truth about what's going on. They're just interested in getting people out, killing black people, hurting them and doing all kind of foolishness. Because they're being provoked that way through the media and it's deliberate and it's all based on lies. That's why I intervene on some of these subjects because, you know, it's not true and it's not right. Call, I was going to say call a spade a spade, but I don't think you can do, say that anymore. But my point is, is that, you know, I don't understand why they cannot own up to what's happening. Why can't they say, look, we are getting the yes we said we don't want immigrants and yes we do have a system in place where we are encouraging immigrants to come into the country because people don't understand it you know all those trump supporters they don't understand why on the one hand he's saying get out all the immigrants we don't want any immigrants coming in here we've got enough immigrants and then on the second hand he's saying oh well if they've got a few if they've got a couple of million we're going to allow them in it's, it's mixed messages. And, you know, people who are not intelligent and the majority of people who are racist and ignorant tend to lack intelligence and tend to lack exposure. And so if they, they're not going to understand that, they're going to think, what's Trump on about? Why does he say he's not going to bring immigrants in and then, you know, if they got a few quid... He's going to allow them in. And the same with the UK. We have it here as well. People don't understand the dynamics. <sighs> My big sigh. What else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, a lot of times they suppose And the tax, these rich people who invest in the country. Now, us poor people, we're all paying our taxes. They know how to mitigate their taxes. They don't, don't end up paying anything. We end up paying it for them. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, most of the countries that allow the golden visa is between five, ten years. Spain is ten years. Um, Greece. Um, let me see. Yeah. We've got Portugal. Um, Portugal will offer their visa after six years, but you have to learn Portuguese. You have to know how to speak Portuguese. Spain, it's five to ten years. Um, Greece offers residency, but no citizenship. Latvia, it's five years, but you have to buy one property in Riga and one property outside Riga. That's the criteria. Um, Singapore has the highest number of multimillionaires, 85% of the on the investor program are Chinese. Um, apparently the European passport is meant to be an in, is the best insurance policy. And I was thinking that, you know, if we, if we, well, we're leaving the European passport, oh, I don't even want to get into that. That's another bloody don't know what. Um, but I don't even see, you know, this, they call it a foreign, well, they call it an immigration investor program or multi-millionaires investor program but how is it an investment when it's like a loan they give you two million after five years you give them that two million back you keep the interest how is that an investment they're not even in the country they're not you know they're not even doing anything to bring money in because most of them have gone back so how is that an investment how are you benefiting you're basing it on um, when you're putting, you're hoping that interest goes up. And remember, interest has been very low for years. If you put it on stocks and bonds, there's no guarantee that the stocks and bonds are going to go up and you're going to make that much money. So how is it an investment? 
I don't understand what they're doing with the bloody money. They're taking it, say they're investing it, then they're giving it back after five years or whatever, how long the um, arrangement is. I don't know. Properties are left empty. You know how much properties, they come over here, rich people buy these beautiful properties and then they leave them. They don't rent them out. And that's usually one of the criteria. You buy a property, you're supposed to rent it to the citizens at market value. They're not renting them. They're just leaving them there. I don't understand people who invest in that property, why they would do that. I don't see how the property is going to make money if it's just left to ruin. How do they make money on that? It's going to decline in value. Unless they just leave it there, watch the market where they are, where if they see the market going to fall, they come over here and sell it. Maybe that's what they do. I don't know. I don't know. £15,000 they get in processing fees from these in millionaire investors. Um, what else? Done all of that. <sighs> yeah, I did put a note there. Are foreign investors using our country as a holding ground? Because that's what it seems like. It's like, you know, um, we've got a few million. We've got England, America, whoever they are, um, have this criteria. They need us to invest the minimum of one to two million. We've got about five million. So we'll go over there. We'll put it there. And, you know, they actually keep it for you for five years. It's just like a loan, really. It's not an investment. It's like a loan. So they give you, they give the UK that five million. They can do, go off and do whatever they like. And it's just like a holding ground. You'll just ask them to hold this money for five years, knowing you're going to get it back. And that there are rumours of money laundering, and I can see how that comes about because you know you're doing it under some kind of business proposition. If you have um, agencies that are corrupt and who are not telling the truth and are not processing genuine applications, and then you know the country, the receiving country is so greedy they're not checking the paperwork. Of course, it's prone to money laundering making dirty money clean it is going to do that what can we little people do just watch you know i think i said the eb5 is equivalent to the t1 visas um but you know these investor visas have increased migration by 20 percent and then you've got your families on top their families on top of that so they're talking about decreasing that migration but they're increasing it through these visas. And the funny thing is, is that when um, they had that federal shutdown, there was this big hoo-ha about the EB-5 visas. Um, and I didn't even know what they were back then, but they were put on hold for that duration. And I know there are some countries, I think it's, um, I don't know if it's Toronto, but some won't even go through this because they said it's not worth the hassle. They take the money, but they don't benefit from it. And they end up forking out more than what they get. So some people aren't even doing that visa program. Yeah, so I've said all the countries. Um, let me just tell you, just in case you've got, have you got one million, two million to invest? Okay, um, I'll just say quickly, um, the country's Portugal, it's six years. Must speak Port Portuguese and have half a million euros to invest. Spain, 10 years, also half a million euros to invest but it must be in real estate. Latvia, five years, quarter of a million in real estate. One in Riga, one outside Riga. Greece, um, 250,000 euros in real estate, but you cannot get permanent, you can't get citizenship. You can only get permanent residency and the property, the tax on the properties is really high. So it's not so attractive for some people. Although I hear the Chinese are going in there like, 
nobody's business. But I think if you've got money, you don't care about high taxes, do you? It's only those people who can't afford it are going to worry about high property taxes. Malta, it's a one-time payment. Uh, I think it starts off from 150000 There are no tax consequences. It, you can always claim to be non-domiciled. So that sometimes is attractive. Ireland, um, there's no real estate option. Um, it's one million uh, or two million in stocks and bonds, or you can donate four hundred thousand. And that's it. I don't know who this is going to be of interest to, but hey, it's of interest to someone out there. Bye bye.